Welcome back to Peek Into COS. This episode is brought to you from the Studio 809 Community Podcast Studio at The Next Us, a professional cooperative environment for small businesses in downtown Colorado Springs. Today, we are joined by two ladies from the Royal Gorge Bridge and Park, Peggy Gare and Vicki Roberts. Welcome to the show. Thank you, welcome. Thank you. We're really <laughs> glad to have you here. Um, both of you have unique connections and uh, mm -hmm. that go back to your very first experience at the Royal Gorge Bridge. Uh, Vicki, let's start with you. You grew up near the bridge. Tell us that story. Mm -hmm. My dad was worked there, and we, I moved up there when I was two years old. So I don't really remember the first few right. <laughs> experiences, but uh, I lived there until I was 21, and then I moved away, then came back after 17 years. And so you actually lived at the park? At the park. Uh, did you live in that house that's up on the, the cliff there? Um, Yes, we ended up there. Okay. We started in a trailer, and we moved down to a cottage, and then they finally moved us up to that okay. big house. And that big house is available for rental. Yes, it's yes. an Airbnb it, or a Verbo yeah, rental now. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I've done that before. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up at the park as a kid? Looking back, it was, it was amazing, the things that we got to do and see. Yeah. You know, when we lived at the time, it was kind of, our friends weren't nearby. It took us a little while to get to town. We had to always have a ride. Your boyfriend didn't want to come to the gorge to pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just different things. But then when I came back and started working there, then you realize the awesomeness. Sure. And when you say going into town, you're talking about Canyon, Canyon City. Canyon City. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, talk a little bit about Canyon City because yeah. people may mm -hmm. not know even mm -hmm. where that is mm -hmm. or, uh, or canyon city is about 14 miles from the park and we would go to we went to school in canyon city of course so we had to ride the bus and everything and canyon city is a nice little town and it was a lot smaller than when we were there it's grown quite a bit mm -hmm. so for listeners uh, canyon city is plus or minus about an hour from colorado springs correct Yes. And then from downtown Canyon City to the bridge, you just said is 14 miles, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's just a little bit yeah. out outside mm -hmm. of town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. And uh, Peggy, let's talk a little bit about your experience of, uh, I guess you could say it all started with a visit, right? <laughs> um, we loaded up our 1970 brand new Monte Carlo <laughs> and we headed for Colorado. Mom had all these coupons. That from were, where? Where were you? We were from Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. So we drove. It's a full day's drive. And we did a lot of the attractions here. And one day, it was 1970, because I confirmed it with Mom, we went down to the bridge. Okay. And my dad was scared to death of heights, so he would not go anywhere near it. But Mom... My sister and I, we walked across the bridge, and I still remember all the people. I still remember the gorgeous view. We'd never seen anything like it in right. Omaha, Nebraska. Right. So uh, it, was, it was awesome. And I still remember Colorado Springs very well also. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the mountain. See, 1970, were you in, like, junior high? Um, I was, I think, like, Junior high, yes. Yeah. I was trying to, junior high, freshman, you know, in there. Okay, so your first trip to the bridge was seventh, eighth grade. Then you were just here on vacation. Yes. So you went back to Omaha. Yes. And then fill in the blanks from there. What happened? How did you get back here? <laughs> well, um, to make a long story short, went to college, you know, moved to Minnesota, and I moved out to Colorado um, for a job. And that was the early 1980s, met my husband, um, and we moved to Canyon City because we bought a business there. Okay. And um, I started working for the school district. I'm not a teacher, but I subbed, and I became um, a work specialist. And then one day, there was an ad in the newspaper that they wanted an HR person 
up at the Royal Gorge Bridge and Park. And I was told I was the first one ever there because all the managers used to hire their own <laughs> okay. yeah. own employees. So I've been there since 2000. Wow, and since 2000. And I can't, I tell everybody that I work in one of the most beautiful places in the world. That's it. You do. Mm-hmm. And I think for listeners, they should know that uh, 1929, right? That's, Correct. That's mm-hmm. when... That's when the this bridge, was bridge opened, um, and it's you know almost a thousand feet high. It is the highest suspension bridge. Is it North America? North America. North America. Highest suspension bridge in North America. I was doing a little bit of homework, and I guess since 1929 to today, you've had 26 million visitors that have come mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. the park. And uh, I, I, I just think it's, I mean, it's remarkable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've already touched on Canyon City a little bit and we're gonna talk about the, the Royal Gorge region mm-hmm. and why people, uh, we, we sometimes we talk about Colorado Springs as like a hub and spoke mm-hmm. sort of destination for visitors. I mean, they can come here and they can Go up to Pikes Peak, you know, right. and and mm-hmm. and go out and and do different day trips, mm-hmm. and that's certainly one of the things we want to uh, talk to visitors about. Uh, starting with you know the experience of how do you how do you get to the Royal Gorge Bridge from Colorado Springs, and then once you get there, talk a little bit about the experience of what a family would would uh, experience. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, it was true when I first came, and it's okay. still true now. Yeah. Um, we've always been a drive market. Mm-hmm. Um, we've always been a, a family-friendly destination. The great thing that I learned, and this was just from talking with other people, you know, I came in 1970. You know, my children obviously lived there, so they came. But we talked to a lot of people um, who came and visited at a young age. Now they're bringing their sons and daughters yeah. and grandparents are bringing their children. So that has always been what has happened. At Generational. The Generational yeah. visitation. And I talked to one person who lived in Alamosa um, growing up and she said their yearly vacation was to come to the Royal Gorge Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, so um, Vicki, when people pull into this parking lot, Mm -hmm. um, which you've been doing most (laughs) of your life, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Talk about what people see. What do they come up Mm -hmm. on? What's the experience like? I don't think they realized the openness. And so that's one of the main things. The the openness, the vastness. That you just see this big canyon. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the buildings and everything. And then you can see this huge bridge. And to think that you can just walk across it right. is amazing. Um, I didn't really know how big the area was until after the fire and all the shrubs and things were gone. So it shows you that we do just sit on this little rock, a granite rock that right. everything was built on. There was a fire? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we'll get to that. And because that's a big part mm-hmm. of the of really almost the, the metamorphosis of how mm-hmm. it, it all changed. So I imagine both of you um, can tell us about where you were uh, in 2013. Was it June 11? June 11, June 11. 2013. <laughs> uh, tell listeners about what you experienced that day from Mm -hmm. from both of your perspectives Mm -hmm. well i always tell people that it felt like i was in a hair dryer and for some reason i came up a little later than usual i think i had a meeting in town and it was just hot but it was a weird hot Mm -hmm. Um, and basically we didn't realize the, the park would literally burn to the ground except for the bridge. Mm-hmm. We just thought we might lose a couple days 
you know, of being closed Mm -hmm. uh, when it first started. But um, it was, we were able to get almost 1,400 people out very safely. Mm -hmm. Um, And we, and it was one of those, Vicki happened to work in accounting, and you don't realize all the things that go into trying to evacuate when you're in accounting, yeah. all the important records. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vicki, what started the fire? You know, I'm not exactly, there's different things that they say. What, what might be the most um, uh, Someone credible? said lightning. Lightning, yeah. Or someone said a cigarette. Mm. Or, you know, I, I, I don't think it's that. ever been said exactly. Okay. But um, we sent a ranger over there to see, you know, is it just something we can put out? Because it, it was on. It was the on the south side. Of south the side of the bridge, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, he had to run for his life to get back to his truck and back over mm-hmm. as it was moving that fast. Right. That day I was doing payroll, and so I was up in the office, and a couple of the guys came over to pick up their checks, and they said, "Have you seen the fire?" I didn't even realize we had a fire, and mm-hmm. so I went out and looked, and so I went out and checked at the gate and the wind was so different i never felt wind like that interesting yeah it was just like and picking things up and sure moving them so i talked to the people at the gate and told them you know i'd quit selling tickets and let's just uh, see how it goes and about that time the sheriff's department came in and i heard him on his radio say oh we're going to need more help Mm -hmm. this is bad yeah so at that time we had customers you know we're pushing them out they're trying to get refunds for their tickets right. things yeah. like that and so finally you know the sheriff says you have to close down you know right. you can get your money later or you can die right. here yeah <laughs> so let's okay so without uh, dwelling too much on just that day mm-hmm. i mean yeah. it, I, I do know that um the outbuildings were, were lost mm-hmm. and i've i've heard it said that um you would never wish a fire on an attraction no. mm-hmm. but the road gorge bridge may be the phoenix right of of of, mm-hmm. of rising up yeah. from literally the ashes and how many years was it that, that the bridge was closed it was closed about 14 months. 14 months. Okay, so mm-hmm. less than a year and a half, which is remarkable in and of mm-hmm. itself. But but talk a little bit about uh, the the rebuild. And now when you pull into that parking lot and you are walking towards the main entrance, mm-hmm. talk about how things have been repurposed and what visitors mm-hmm. will see. Mm-hmm. We tried to bring back a lot of the things that we had and we did that but it's completely a different area Mm -hmm. people that have been here before and come back you know this is all new to them yeah they marvel Uh uh-huh and do you get good good feedback on on the way it looks we do yeah we do they love it yeah so um okay so now you know people come in and and you know there's this great gift shop and and you know all great Mm-hmm. food and beverage and picnic areas and, and all mm-hmm. that other things that are that are in that main building and then people walk out and let's talk about the bridge mm-hmm. i mean peggy the fact that it was the one thing that didn't burn <laughs> is amazing well and actually um about 100 boor- boards on the south side were singed pretty well but those were easily replaceable and we do have, we milled some of those boards and put them up and around so people could actually see you know, yeah. on the front of the building. Um, but I, I kind of wanted to go back. What we have now is a national park look. Mm-hmm. And I started thinking about it back when we first came in 1970, um, the visitor center there had the traditional Colorado national park look okay so (laughs) yeah so we 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 we've kept up with the times and um but the bridge it's one of those you don't realize when you when you finally go over the hill and you see the bridge just how massive 
that thing is right sitting across the gorge yeah you, on your website it says uh, for those of you who may have been like Peggy's father um, <laughs> there's 4100 steel cables that that hold that bridge in place um, for the most part, you know, people are walking or, or you mm-hmm. can ride a bike across it. And then every once in a while, mm-hmm. I've been on there when there's been a vehicle coming, <laughs> a Jeep or whatever, mm-hmm. that, uh, or a golf cart, whatever, mm-hmm. from, from, from a staff member. But you are, you are literally about 1,000 feet up in the air looking down over the, the Royal Gorge. Um, tell vis- listeners what else you can see from up there that are part of the park. Mm-hmm. Well, once you um, go out to the middle of the bridge, you are going to see the Arkansas River underneath, mm-hmm. and you see this glorious mountain range on the other side. Um, there's lots of wildlife in the park. Um, you will see bighorn sheep walking through. There will be deer walking through, um, usually. We have all kinds of little, I call them little critters, you know, <laughs> right. come out and look and see what you're doing and right. run back in. But the thing that has drawn most everybody is the views. Sure. And I guess that's the one thing that's kept me working there. Um, it's just hard to beat the view that Vicki and I have had you right. know, every day that we work. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about the buildings on the other side of the bridge that have been rebuilt Mm -hmm. as well as some of the rides that Mm -hmm. people can experience because the bridge would be enough but Mm -hmm. wait there's more Mm -hmm. let's talk about that well what we found is back um, before the fire we had a gondola and it was this big square thing that you could put about what 40 people Mm -hmm. in it and that was very popular and it would go across and come back. Um, After 2013, we put in a new gondola system where you can actually sit down. Um, You know, it takes 24 people back and forth. Mm -hmm. People really like going across, you know, that nice slow view that you get. We also put in, in 2003, we put in one of the first extreme rides uh, even in Colorado, yeah, um, it was called a sky coaster, and it's one of those. It's a tower that lifts you up, and you swing about 50 miles an hour, and you're out in a little ways over the gorge, mm-hmm. but you're still probably 11, 1200 feet, you know, looking straight yeah. down. Yeah. So that was wildly popular. Yeah. Um, I know Vicki and I have done it, and it's probably the closest oh, thing that I came. Employees that are 80 years old go and do it. There you I go. I mean, they love it, so uh, that's <laughs> something awesome. for everybody. Right. Uh, but wait, there's more. Well, and the one thing, <laughs> the one thing that's really um, popular now is we have a zip line. Yep. It's made by Ziprider that goes across the gorge, and it goes parallel with the gondolas. And it's one of those you sit in kind of a, a harness chair, yeah. so you're not in control of your own destiny. You know, most most places you're going like this. Yeah. So it gives you the, the your arms are free, your legs are free, and you are in wide open space and mm-hmm. probably the most glorious view you've ever seen yeah. now vicky and i've done that also yeah, many sure. times sure. <laughs> sure. or at least whenever that we can they'll let us <laughs> you know get away from our desk there you go <laughs> uh vicky talk a little bit about the theater on the other mm-hmm. side of the bridge and, mm-hmm. and <sighs> the theater escaped the fire mm-hmm. and so it's about it's the only building on that side that right. did mm-hmm. and we've just Included, it's got a historical uh, p- part to it. Sure. And we have a film that we show in there. We have a bird show in that theater now okay. for the, everybody in the summer. It's a little bit of everything yeah. for everybody. And and um, the film does kind of capture mm-hmm. the history you. of the mm-hmm. bridge. And, you know, when you've right. had a fire mm-hmm. that changed your whole business, right. uh, it, it does chronicle it. So mm-hmm. for... For someone who might not know, right. 
about what they've just walked across mm -hmm. or what they could can experience the mm -hmm. the film i thought is is just really yeah. really revealing a lot of people want to know well why was the bu bridge built well it was built as a place to come and a con not it was an attraction it was an, an attraction, attraction. <laughs> right yeah, built no, as an no attraction question. it wasn't built just so you could get you know to yeah. the other side and um I've seen live music out there. I mean, talk a little bit mm -hmm. about the, the, the amphitheater and the music. Mm -hmm. We have had some concerts. We call it Elk Park Amphitheater. Mm -hmm. um, during this, the summer, every day, we do have live music, usually, or some kind of live entertainment. Um, we have had some concerts, evening concerts, um, out there. And it's one of those, it's a nice grassy hill that you sit on. Um, people have kind of compared it to, you know, a Fiddler's or mm -hmm. a, a Red yeah, Rock. Sure, right. mm -hmm. And it's just one of those, it's it's just really great to sit outside. And, you know, Colorado is cooler in the evenings. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like built-in air conditioning there in the go. summer. Yeah. So. yeah. It's it's interesting when, when you think about people who come to our region and how, um, how rich we are with attractions. Uh, the experience that you can get in the Royal Gorge Bridge really is unlike anything anywhere else in the, mm -hmm. in the right. world, in, in, in my humble opinion. So A, when people are planning their itineraries, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you need a day. You need right. at least a day to go down and experience Canyon City and there's, you know, there's trains and, you know, talk, talk Racking. for a second. Yeah. Talk for a second about the train. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that ride the train and go through then come up to the bridge Yeah, because they want to see it from the top version after seeing it from the bottom. Well, <laughs> and I, I think the very first time I saw the bridge was whitewater rafting mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. down the Arkansas. Down and, you know, you look up, you go under that bridge uh -huh. and you just go, wow, I got it. Look, there's people. They're like, they're like waving, uh -huh. and you're holding on for dear life in the <laughs> in the raft. But uh, it's for for visitors. I hope that you will really think seriously about uh, planning a trip. Mm -hmm. And and there's just so much to see down uh, there. And um, you know, so I hope mm -hmm. we've uh, described it in such a way right. that. Uh, We'll be able towards the end here to we'll give the website and tell people how they they can find out more information. But before we wrap, we have a quick break, and I want to talk about our sponsor for this episode, which is our Colorado Springs Airport. <laughs> There's something about the Colorado Springs Airport that drives travelers wild. Maybe it's the friendly customer service, the stress-free security process, or just the laid-back vibe. Whatever it is. It's easy to see why so many people are falling in love with Colorado Springs Small Airport. So go ahead, fly COS, and see what all the fuss is about, and fall in love with Colorado Small Airport. It's been, uh, it's, it's just a great addition to our oh, to our yeah. community. And mm -hmm. Peggy, like you said on the front end, we we are a drive attraction, a drive destination. But now with more and more flights in and out, it's mm -hmm. uh, it makes us even more accessible. All right, so as we wrap up here, I'm going to uh, going to ask you three questions, and um, I want we ask everybody these questions. And so, uh, what I'll do, Vicky, I'm going to start with you. In this case, use three words to describe Canyon City and the and the whole Royal Gorge region. How would, what three words would you use? Um, beautiful, accessible, and friendly. Okay, beautiful, accessible, and friendly. Okay, so Peggy, I'm gonna twist it on you and ask you to use three words on how you would describe Colorado Springs. I would describe it as a beautiful city, a beautiful. Um, I would also describe it as um, up and coming. Okay. And I would also describe it as, um, I guess I'm grasping for the word, 
friendly and progressive. Friendly and progressive. I use more than three. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> sorry. We won't. We won't edit those out or anything. Okay, uh, Peggy, I'll stay with you for a second. When you think of the whole Pikes Peak region, what's your favorite hidden gem? Oh man, there's so many. I know. <laughs> it's like you put me on the spot. You know, actually, I was thinking about this. The drive to Canyon City and from Canyon City to Colorado Springs is is beautiful. On Highway 115. 115. Mm -hmm. Even under construction, mm -hmm. it's it's a very beautiful drive. Okay. But I think the biggest hidden, and it's not really so hidden, is I enjoy the the downtown areas like old Colorado City, um, Manitou. Manitou. Yeah, I just Colorado really Springs. enjoy those yeah. neighborhood. And the hidden gem to me, I'm sure it's world famous, but the the area around the, the Air Force Academy yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it's really growing. You're absolutely right. Vicki, what would you say is your favorite hidden gem? Um, I love to go out and drive in the Garden of the Gods. Garden of the Gods, I yeah. always bring people up here and mm -hmm. do that. Yeah, yeah. Then, of course, Seven Falls. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, great, great, great little spot. I'd say probably Seven Falls might be a little more hidden than Garden of the <laughs> exactly. Gods. But no, I exactly. think we, we get, mm -hmm. to get your choice. Okay. You've lived here a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you still have something on your bucket list to do here in the Pikes Peak region? Um, I want to ride the new Manitou Incline. <laughs> you, oh, go up the cog? Yeah. Go, up go up the, the cog, cog railroad yeah. to go up to the top mm -hmm. of Pikes Peak and the yet, Summit House. So. Okay, so do the, to mm -hmm. do the cog, all right? Mm -hmm. Peggy, how about you? I have not driven up Pikes Peak. Hmm. Ever? Not ever. Okay. If we go back to the beginning, my dad was not going to go <laughs> <laughs> anywhere that was over sure. 3,000 feet. But um, I've never driven the highway up. Okay. You know, I've, I've gone up on the, the cog. Sure. But, okay. But never driven. So it sounds like the two of you could have a bucket list day. Yes together mm -hmm. where you could come up and and do seven falls mm -hmm. do guard of the gods mm -hmm. and and take the cog up to the to mm -hmm. the top mm -hmm. and or drive it you know you yeah. you take the cog up and <laughs> take your reach at the top and you can drive down <laughs> yeah. and have a donut okay Perfect. great so um to close um what do you want visitors to know where can they find more information out about the park well, we have a website, um, www.royalgorgebridge.com, and it will, it's got lots of pictures, videos. It will give you um, a little synopsis and pictures of all the rides, the sky coaster, you know, the gondola, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, also, in the Colorado Springs Visitor Bureau, um, there's a lot of information yep. um, about this region and us as well. And we're also members of Pikes Peak Region, region attractions. attractions. Right. It used to be Pikes Peak Country Attractions. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm always kind of following a region. But um, they have a website also that all the things that we've talked about yep. um, is shown on there. And we're, we're a big part of that organization. Yes. So I would say to our visitors, uh, whether it's your first time or you're coming back, you know, you, sh you know, the reason to include the Royal Gorge Bridge and Park is that 26 million people have already experienced mm -hmm. it. And if you <laughs> haven't, it's time to go there. And if you haven't been there in a while, you got to come, come back, back and mm -hmm. see all the great additions. Mm -hmm. So, um, Vicki, Peggy, thank you both for being here okay. today. Uh, I hope we've... Uh, uh, giving people some ideas of some new itineraries that they can do by just heading down 115 and going through Canyon City and to the Royal Gorge region. So thank you for thank you You're again welcome. for being here. Thanks, Doug.